Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you five things I think you should know about this upcoming full moon happening December 7th, 2022. Number one, perhaps the biggest theme right now is the feeling, the, the intuitive knowing that a new chapter of your life is trying to emerge, trying to be birthed into reality. But it's very scary a lot of times, quite frankly, when this happens because we don't know what that chapter is going to look like. We might have an idea of what we would like it to look like, but there's no guarantee. We don't have like the, the, the safety and the clarity as we do in our current life situation. That for a lot of us, even if it's painful, is comfortable, it's familiar, it's predictable. We can sleep like babies at night because we know how things go. So sometimes as we go forth on the spiritual journey, what can happen is literally the emergence of a sense, a calling. Joseph Campbell, I'm reading this book right now called A Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell and it talks about the hero's journey. And the very first step of the hero's journey is the what he calls the call to adventure. That's like a, it can happen through uh, a breakdown of a, familiar, a, a, a circumstance, or it can also just happen from like a genuine inspiration, like an aha moment. <gasps> I, would, I would love to start a Reiki business. And maybe you're like a corporate executive and you're a mother of three and you're like, well, gosh, that seems very disruptive to my existing life. That's the call to adventure. But it does excite you. It is enticing. You think, man, if that was to be my new life, if I could really have a Reiki business and not have to do all this stuff, you know, at this corporate job, man, that would be amazing. But sometimes just the idea of that degree of change can freak you out, especially when you have that strong feeling in your gut that that is where you're meant to go. That is the new chapter and there's also usually a knowing that you won't really be all that comfortable anymore hanging around in this old situation because it's probably already breaking down. It's probably already kind of pushing you out, but out where? Out into the scary unknown. But there's that feeling that if I was to do it, it would work out beautifully. And just this sort of psychological predicament. Should I stay or should I go? What's real? What's not? Is this, am I just, you know, it, it, you sometimes can question your own, your own sanity to an extent. Like, is, am I crazy for even entertaining, stopping this circumstance that's supporting me? It doesn't have to be a career. It could be anything, but it could be very important to you and a big part of your life that you're maybe considering letting go of in exchange for just an idea, just the unknown. And not only is that in itself disruptive to our feeling of being safe in our reality, but it's also very challenging for our identity. All of our deepest fears and wounds get kind of brought up to the surface because it's like, I, I know I want to be a Reiki, start a Reiki business, but who, who are you to start a Reiki business? You're too young. You're too old. You don't do things the way normal people do. You have your own way and no one's going to like it. Your hair is too short, it's too long. All these different, all this ego resistance can also accompany you in this challenging predicament when you finally hear that call to adventure. I'll tell you what, my friends, and I've been here, the very next uh, stage of this book I'm referring to, there's a whole chapter about the refusal of the call. And it said, it's not good. It's not good. I've been through it. When you know you are to do something else, there's a soul calling and you ignore it and you try to like pretend it's not there and just sort of quietly stick around where you no longer belong, where you no longer belong starts to kind of collapse and you're also depressed and you're just, there's just a feeling of a big part of your journey here on earth is being missed when you refuse the call. So I don't recommend it. I don't believe any of you will. And I have, trust me, I have. I've refused the call as long as one possibly can. And eventually in the end, I was just pushed into it anyway. But here's the thing. There's no reason to resist the call. You want to do this thing. 
And when you have that inner feeling like, I want to do this, I sense it's going to work out, I also sense it's going to be awesome, and all that's stopping you is just this conditioned fear, I can tell you, having been on a few hero's journeys of my own, it is awesome. In fact, it's more awesome than you can even anticipate. You only have this little faint idea of how cool it could be, but I'm telling you, when you witness yourself transitioning in a way that you never thought was even possible in your lifetime, and the growth, the transformation, the confidence, all these cool attributes you cultivate along the way, and at the end of the day, you become a Reiki practitioner, not because that's what you wish for, because that's what life you know, blessed you with because that's who you are. You don't have a call to adventure for something that's not perfectly authentic to who you are and what you're capable of. But I can't express in words how difficult that might be. But this December full moon is saying, listen, like it or not, whether you feel ready or not, this is what's coming up for you. And if you can allow yourself to just take a leap of faith, then your life can shift and transform and expand on all levels in very miraculous ways. That's the promise. That's the glory. That's the destination of this hero's journey that a lot of people, I suspect, are hearing that call right now. Number two, you will be an antenna right now for amazing ideas. A lot of times it's just a matter of accepting the call to adventure. Saying, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I guess I'll give it a try. I'm willing to, I'm willing, I'm open to it. <laughs> Ideas start to come. In between the bouts, we are very nervous about it. You're feeling very uncomfortable. Like, oh boy, am I really even considering it? You might find yourself kind of oscillating between being tapped in and inspired. You might feel like, I know this is going to work out. And then other times, maybe five minutes later, you're like pulling your, what hair you have left, you're pulling your hair out and you're freaking out thinking, are you crazy? Well, how can you possibly even be considering this? Have you, are you aware of all the different risks involved? You don't know if it's gonna work for you and you're like, Ooh, you work yourself up into this crazy frenzy. And then you snap out of it and, and then you get your notebook out and it's like, ah, hmm. and the ideas come. I've been here before, my friends, and what I found is it very beneficial to do things that put you in the flow. For me, I had to. I, if, I would have lost my mind if I didn't. I had to go for a walk every day, even though it was winter time, with my wife and little daughter and my, my kids and dogs. We'd go for these, these like walks into the downtown area back where I lived in Michigan, and it was freezing cold, but those walks, for some reason, they brought out the best of me. My wife and I would have these awesome conversations where it really just felt like our higher selves were communicating. And it didn't matter how I felt that morning or what would happen later that day. On those walks, I was reminded of why I'm doing all this stuff, making all these huge changes. And the reason is because I knew it was gonna work out. I was able to perceive the truth of the situation on those walks. So for you, it might be during your yoga sessions every morning, you do one of those videos online or something, and it's like, during those yoga sessions, you're aligned. You're aligned with the part of you that knows. It's all good, that knows how to navigate this sometimes winding path of the hero's journey. It's very important to tap into that. And also to be cool with yourself um, at the times when you do get in your head because it's, uh, it's part of the process. It's just the resistance that comes anytime you're about to expand into something new and awesome. Number three, an identity crisis that leads to true self-discovery. And once you finally know who you are and what you are here to do, at least next, at least what's, what's authentic to you, what resonates, what lights you up, regardless of what you think about it. Sometimes you can have, be at, be at odds with who you are. For me, when I decided, I was, when I realized I was to be like this YouTuber and talk about spiritual awakening, my mind had a lot of negative things to say. I thought it was, I thought, even now, I still kind of think it's a bit weird and out there and I still have certain thoughts about it, but here I am, case in point, I'm making the video, I'm owning it, even though the inner critic sometimes can get kind of loud. 
But what I found is that when you really own who you are and you proceed through life in that authentic way, regardless of what people say, regardless of what your inner critic says, all that kind of stuff, then there is like easy, fast, and joyful manifestation. You can make a lot of very positive and significant changes in your life, even in terms of your degree of overall happiness and sense of well-being and satisfaction very, very, very quickly. It's almost like that's where we've always been meant to be in, in our authentic self and through conditioning, through just the different way the earth game is set up, we've been holding ourselves back in this place that we think we need to be, this place where we were told we belong and it's, that's why we're not happy, that's why things are breaking down, that's why we're stressed. So it's not about having to work so hard as we have been. It's more about letting all that go and letting the universe sort of usher us into where we've always been meant to be. Number four, loads of synchronicity and magic. Once you discover who you are and accept it and agree to go on to this call to adventure, one of the next things that happens is you're given, I forgot the way that Joseph Campbell words it, but you're given like a guide. You are given support. There is sometimes a, almost like a mythical, <laughs> a very like a magical scenario where once you finally start walking this path, even though you're nervous and such, something happens, you meet a person or you're some, something kind of comes in to help you. And it's like the timing could not have been better. The, the nature of the help that's there is just perfect. It's exactly what you need. It, you couldn't have written it into the script any better. And it's just perfect and, and magical. And that's one of the beautiful things that does come along is that you realize that when you finally listen to your inner being and go where you feel meant to go, then there is a lot of support from the universe through, through different synchronicity. In fact, you might find yourself constantly not knowing intellectually what you're supposed to do or what's next or, or how it's going to be, but you'll find yourself getting these little checkpoints, these little vibrational, ah, I don't know what the hell's going on, but in this moment, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I don't know how I got here. It just sort of feels, I feel lucky, but in this moment, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Synchronicity, checkpoints. You can navigate this terrain with your intuition, with your inner compass. And you may be surprised at what can also come and guide you as well. Some of us can perceive our spirit guides. Sometimes our deceased loved ones or, or our ancestors can come to our aid. It can come in a lot of different forms. Sometimes, practically speaking, you might get a book or something, but there is a magic, there is a magic component to the hero's journey that is also very, very present right now. In fact, just last night, I had a dream with one of my dogs, my, my, a dog that passed away. His name was Maynard. It was a beautiful pit bull. And he was in my dream all, all throughout the dream. And it was very, very vivid for me and very awesome. Sometimes he'll, he'll come in and kind of hang out with me. And it's always to remind me that this is real. There is no such thing as death. I do exist. And actually, I'm here for you when you need it. Sometimes just to hang out. Sometimes just to remind you that there's a lot more to reality than meets the eye. That magic is actually a, a genuine part of your earth experience if you just allow yourself to be open to it. Number five, a new and deeper sense of safety. Oftentimes during this hero's journey, the way our life unfolds is perfect. Perfect in order to trigger us to the very depth, to the very core of our being. For a lot of us, it has to do with maybe relationships. We feel just very vulnerable. All of our like inner child wounds are just up there at the surface. For me, it's always in terms of like my life situation. I always get into these sort of uh, unknowns with my life situation where I feel like I, I, I can't manage it all mentally. I feel unsafe in my, my life circumstance. 
it's all different, but during this hero's journey, these feelings sometimes come up. Just a feeling of just not being safe, not being okay, not being, you know, not being like where it's hard to relax because you just have no, nothing to cling to, to give you that sense of safety. And that sounds like a bleak situation. Like, well, that sucks. Well, yeah, it does until you realize there's a different part of you that you can gain safety from. And it has nothing to do with guaranteed situational outcomes. It has nothing to do with your circumstance, nothing to do with the people in your life, and everything to do with just yourself in your body, there is a place that always knows. And I found myself going through these hero's journeys by just default, by lack of options, like turning inward more and more and more because that was the only way I felt okay. If I allowed my mind to race, I could work myself up into a frenzy like that. And I've had it where that has happened many, many times. But usually when life is like that, there is a, a deeper sense of yourself that can kind of open up, that you have access to, that you can rest in. And also, as you witness yourself succeeding, which you will, we don't get called on this hero's journey to fail, even though it can seem like we may fail. We don't. There, it's, there's a, there is a magical component, as I mentioned, to it. And when you find yourself walking from stepping stone to stepping stone, looking back in amazement at how you've gotten this far and realizing just how much you've changed, you develop this authentic confidence in yourself and also life, where you realize, oh, I don't need circumstances to be perfect in my life to feel safe within myself because I've been witnessing myself walk this path in a successful way, in a way that's led to me coming to know myself more, in a way that's led to more happiness and abundance and friendship and love and all the things I want in life are just coming to me as I walk this path, even though it's scary. And in that there's trust. There's a level of faith you, you achieve that you just can't get from the safety of your notebook or from the safety of your tarot deck or from the safety of circumstance. All of that, one of the constants in life, as you all know, is change. Everything is constantly being wiped away and restarted and wiped away again. And for the mind, it's chaotic. But within ourselves, there's a part of us that is not affected by the changes. And during this hero's journey, you get to realize what that part of you is and defer to it more often. And it breeds this genuine sense of being okay and safe in the moment. And it's also this being in more touch with that part of yourself that's going to allow you to do a lot of the different things that you might feel inspired to do in your purpose, with your career, in the way you help people and show up for your friends and family. You're gonna have this energy signature that is sort of created moment by moment as you walk this hero's journey that's just priceless, that you'll always have with you. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, my friends. And before I go, I have two quick announcements. Number one is next Tuesday, I'm conducting a live online QHHT Future Life progression. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of people think of QHHT as a past life progression. Those are great too. This one is a future life progression and it gives you kind of a glimpse. Whether it's real or not, I can't validate, but it can give you a glimpse into where you're heading. And this can provide the person with a lot of information, a lot of valuable insight, and sometimes confirmation and peace and confidence and happiness. So it's always different. But anyway, if that's something you would like to experience, I'm going to leave a link down below. It's called the Elevate Awakening Coaching Program. It's a monthly membership I run. It's only $29 a month currently. And it's this thing I'm referring to is free for all the members. And it happens next Tuesday. So if you want to check that out, if you want to join us, I'm going to leave a link down below. You can look into it if you'd like. And also, before I go, I will be doing, I'm 99% sure, a retreat in Sedona this June. And it's gonna be for only 20 to 25 people. So it will sell out very quickly. That's why I'm letting you know now to maybe check, check your calendar, see if you're available in June. Because once I announce it, it'll probably sell out within a couple of days because 
It was just a big demand that I used to do these retreats all the time. And now it'll probably be just as one time per year, this one small retreat. So again, if you want to be a part of it, fantastic. I'll let you know. There's no link right now. I'll let you know. And with that said, have an amazing day, my friends. Thank you for all the love and support and likes and comments and shares. It means the world to me. It helps the channel grow as well. And I will see you soon. Much love.